Hey guys, Brian from Brian Bow is here. Well, I was just about to head out for the evening, but it looks like we have another litter on the ground. Uh, these are Qual Key Dwarf Boas. So I'm gonna go check out the litter, take out the babies, take care of the mother. So let's go take a look and see what we have. Well, I was just about to head out to Costco of all places with my wife to do some shopping and grab a $1.50 hot dog and soda combo for dinner. But as luck would have it, I have uh, some more pressing issues to deal with with this birth of this crawl key litter. So let's just take a quick look here. You can see some babies. The mother is still in the chill phase right after giving birth, so hopefully she's not going to attack. So I can see quite a few babies there. See a little bit of yolk. I don't see any slugs, which is always a good thing. So this female is a, this girl is uh, about 16 years old, I think. She's one of my older females. She's had a number of litters previously. Really, really good breeder. And this looks like a real nice litter. So you guys know the drill with my litter videos. I'm going to gently remove the mother, give her a soak in some lukewarm water, get her cleaned up take out the babies and then we'll take a look at the babies. Just do some quick close-ups before I take them out. I always like to document my litter before I disturb them. You can see the females kind of lying right on top of them. Hopefully they're okay. There's a little baby actually looking like he wants to take a ride on mama's back. Which is kind of cute. But the female is still kind of lying motionless. Usually they're pretty tired right after even birth, so they don't move around a whole lot. And it's a good time to take them out because you're less likely to lose any blood in the process. The mother boa is now soaking in some lukewarm water to clean her up and get all the scent of the boa baby goo off of her. And so now I've come to just check on the babies. So this female was actually moving around quite a bit the last few days and her due date predicted by her post ovulation shed is tomorrow. So I figured that this was going to happen pretty soon. She usually gives birth right around 105 days after the post ovulation shed. Today would be day 104. And so looks like a pretty nice litter, maybe a dozen or so, dozen to 15 babies. Unfortunately, I see a few stillborns just kind of lying there limply. I don't see any slugs though, which is always a good thing. So I'm just gonna go in there and see if I can find these stillborn. Yeah, there's one. So this guy unfortunately isn't living. Here's another one. So it's always heartbreaking. And these guys look like they were completely developed so who knows what happens but unfortunately it's just part of breeding boas. I don't think I see any others. Well, oh. no here's another one. I don't want to force him out. So yeah, three stillborns and then I don't know how many live ones. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these guys into a separate tub on top of some paper towels and get a better look. I removed all the live babies. Uh, first I wanted to show you guys these uh, unfortunate stillborns. And unfortunately this is often what happens with breeding boas. You know, the development doesn't always go according to plan and you get these stillborn animals. As I mentioned, some of them look like they're pretty much normal as far as their development. Uh, others are you know, clearly not normal. Apologies if you're a little squeamish. Um, this one right here, you can see its head isn't developed normally. It's kind of got a short upper jaw right there. This one almost looks like it's got the external organs kind of outside of the body. And it's almost tied up in knots. I've never seen a stillborn like this. Something obviously went wrong during development. And um, you know, as I mentioned, it's unfortunate, but you know, typically if you see a few stillborns and the rest of the litter is okay, it's basically just likely due to a random event. 
that happened that was completely out of your control and nothing you could have done about it. If you have an entire litter that's, you know, deformed or stillborn, it implies that there was some issue with the incubation or the husbandry, maybe the temperatures were too high or something like that. So these are the unfortunates. Uh, luckily, no slugs, though. Always seems like you either get some slugs or some stillborns. So some people who have uh, snake eating reptiles like tegus or king snakes will actually feed these to them. You know, since I'm not in that category, I'm going to give them a proper burial in my garden. Here we have the live ones. So there's a total of 13 babies. And you can see there quite a bit of goo in this litter. See a lot of umbilical cord and the amniotic fluid referred to as the goo. And these guys look like they have quite a few different patterns. And the other litters I got from this female, there were quite a few different looks. You know, some had some quite a bit of striping, especially towards the tail. Some had kind of irregular saddles, some had more uniform saddles. But the crawl key are kind of cool because you can get like a lot of different patterns and shapes of the saddles in any given litter. There's a close up of the babies. Maybe you'll get a better idea what I'm talking about with the differences in the patterns. So this is actually the third litter I've had from this female. She's a really good breeder and she was actually fully adult when I got her. She had actually had, I think, two or three litters previously. So quite a few babies out there due to this one female. And my other litters were about the same size, around 13 or so babies. So these guys probably have a lot of relatives out there. It's kind of strange when you think about Crawl Key, it's a very small island. And some people have estimated that the number of these animals living in the wild on Crawl Key could be as few as eight animals. Eight, you know, which is kind of crazy because you hear about like California condors and pandas and tigers and all these other endangered animals, but uh, you don't really hear much about boas on some island in Central America. So this litter right here could represent more than all of the Crawl Key boas alive in the wild on Crawl Key. Kind of amazing to think about but you know hopefully we'll have these animals in captivity for quite some time because they're a joy to work with a great small boa for someone that wants to work with you know full blooded boa constrictor that behaves and acts like one but is a little bit more more manageable size wise You can see and maybe hear that some of these animals are kind of moving around in the in the goo, so to speak. It's almost kind of like a little bit of a slurping sound. But they've all broken out of the amniotic sac, so that goo is just the residual fluid in the res remainder of the amniotic sacs. But uh, it really starts to decompose pretty quickly. Actually, I see one animal right there in the center is kind of still moving around in the sack. I think that's why I hear the noise he's trying to get out. And see his little head there kind of poke through. But what I'll end up doing is I'll put these guys in or on top of a uh, heat mat set to maintain about 88 degrees on the hot side. And I'll come and change the paper towels in a few hours because this goo is really going to start to go bad pretty quick. And what I'm going to do now is just thoroughly clean out the enclosure for the mother, put in fresh substrate, and then get her back in there. So the female's done soaking and I have her back in the cage. Just went ahead and put some corrugated cardboard on the bottom rather than the uh, Coco husk is just a lot easier to keep clean, but she did great. She looks really deflated now. She's not a huge boa, probably about five, five and a half feet. So that litter was uh, had her pretty distended with those uh, 18 babies inside. Unfortunately, five of which were not uh, 
fated to survive or make it in the world but 13 beautiful live babies now in the captive gene pool for the qual boa so this female has done a real real great service for the uh, boa hobby here in the united states with her five or even six litters she was actually born in 2005 you know so real great uh, contributor to the boa hobby and she really deserves a, a nice rest i'll give her a rat tomorrow and she'll hopefully put the weight back in not too much time it's been a while i just came to change the paper towels clean up all that goo that's been building up and you can see these guys are just piled in the corner as the babies normally do since there's safety in numbers and look like they're doing pretty well so far one thing that i noticed with these guys is they're really big for dwarf boa babies much bigger than my tower humoris they're about the same size as my Suriname baby, so probably close to two feet. And you can see the different patterns. Here's one that has a striped tail there. It's kind of aberrant shaped saddles. Some have more of a standard, you know, normal shaped saddles. They're really nice babies, really nice litter. And these crawl key boas have really grown on me over the years. This there's one trying to escape. Here's a close up. And as I was saying, these guys have really grown on me over the years. One of my favorite locality boas. Really beautiful looking and really convenient size. Also enjoyable to work with. These guys and the, the Tarhimaras are definitely my two favorite dwarf boas. I plan to just keep them in a simple setup in this uh, 56 quart sterilite tub paper towel substrate for the next uh, week to 10 days or so till they shed and then they'll be on their own in their own separate tubs and I'll try to feed them for the first time. You can see I added a water dish. They probably won't drink but it's always good to have in there to increase the humidity. Sometimes the baby boas like to soak and I think maybe it helps them shed a bit. So. Real nice animals, so I'll put these guys on top of a heat mat set to maintain 90 degrees on one side and they should be good for the next week or so. Thought I'd take out the father of the litter to end this video. So this guy is a nine year old qual key male. This guy is a real Bravo bloodline bred by my buddy Michael Beach up in Oregon. And I really like this guy, he's really chill can see perfect size he's maybe four and a half feet or so I love his uh, kind of ashy gray coloration beautiful white belly with the darker you know black speckles and markings and also great to handle these guys they just kind of they don't really move all that fast they don't try to escape but you can definitely feel the strength of the boa constrictor so definitely a muscular animal but no bigger than like a large corn snake or king snake something like that so very manageable size for somebody looking for a pint-sized boa constrictor and so this guy had a litter with the my female back uh, two years ago so this is uh, the second litter together and uh, actually kept three of the babies from the first litter they're grown up and they're doing quite nicely now that they're approaching two years of age and so I will have some of these babies available from this litter. So if you're looking for a qual key boa, this is a good opportunity to get a pure Rio Bravo bloodline animal. I probably expect these guys will be ready in about two months after they've fed a few times and shed a couple times. So probably around the September time frame. And so stay tuned for future videos where I'll you know give you guys updates on this litter and how they're doing, show you the babies after they shed etc as well as when they'll be available for sale so really happy with this litter it's been a good last couple weeks we've had some really nice litters on the ground here at brian boas so so far so good this boa breeding season we'll have to see what august brings uh, or you know the rest of july and august should be pretty busy here if things 
uh, go well. So please stay tuned to future videos on these babies as well as other litters to come. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can shoot me a line or write them in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.